Hey everybody, Fishman here. For those of you who have been following along with my videos, uh, you'll remember a little while ago I got some um, uh, microworms in from uh, D from down the wormhole. And when she sent them to me, uh, they were uh, uh, the media she was using was mashed potatoes. And then I got a number of comments on the video saying, asked me wonder why I was uh, using oats instead of uh, uh, mashed potatoes as well. And I've never used them before, so it was kind of interesting. And then I, I did a little bit of a search uh, for YouTube videos and seeing who uses what. And I actually found that uh, mashed potatoes uh, was quite common. So what I figured what I'd do is, well, uh, I'm going to do a comparison to see uh, which is better for growing uh, microworms. So what I've done here is I've uh, I've been cultured in that for a little while, so I just took uh, two of the cultures I had and scraped off some of the media, and as you can tell, I've got a fair amount of oats in here as well. Uh, but that doesn't matter. This is how I subculture anyway. What I do is I take water, usually from an aquarium, I mix in a fair amount of uh, dry active yeast. Uh, this is baker's yeast. Uh, you can tell by my exact measuring that uh, it's very important to get the right amount. Uh, so what I do is just uh, hydrate that and let it sit for a little bit and then I just inoculate uh, the cultures with it. So what I've done is I prepared four. And actually remember from the uh, the first set of videos I did these plastic containers you see behind me here uh, I wanted to try one out simply because I wanted to have the contrast uh, so when the worms climb at the sides you can see them easier and I thought it'd be kind of cool but then I said I didn't really care for them because it was harder to harvest uh, but as it turns out uh, these cultures really produce an awful lot of worms so I've actually gotten to like them and I've just put up with the, a little bit more difficulty in the harvesting so what I'm going to do here is I've just made these uh, so I'm just checking here to make sure they're cooled down enough so I don't cook the worms and what I'm going to do is, uh, well not exactly measure, but I'm going to use uh, the baster here. It has graduations on it. And I'm going to inoculate each of these four cultures uh, with the same amount of uh, media. And then I'm going to watch as it progresses through the days. Now I'm not just going to do this just to see you know, which one makes more worms or uh, other stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also compare you know, how often I can harvest uh, and also how long they last because I don't, you know, I'm kind of lazy. I don't really want to have to reculture very often. I want this to uh, be something that I can uh, set up and then at least get two, three weeks of. So that, those are all the things that are kind of going through my mind here as I'm setting these things up. Um, and the mashed potatoes is just your standard uh, instant mixes that uh, you can get, uh, potato flakes, so do they say. So what we're going to do here is, uh, this is goes on for a little bit, so I'm going to do is switch over to fast forward here, because I'm just getting the last little bit of culture out. And then in the end what I've done is, uh, this is something I actually do when I subculture as well, uh, you can add back in these yeast, the yeast and uh, worm mix, and it will uh, revive old cultures. Uh, so those two cultures now will actually be uh, produce more worms for a short period of time. So I'm going to lid these all up. And then what we're going to do is come back uh, 24 hours later, and I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like, which is uh, amazing how fast these things breed. So here we go. This is day one, the first culture with uh, the potato mix. And <laughs> you couldn't tell what was going on before, like, yes, like yeah, well, the day before, but they breed fast and this is the, uh, the oats and you can see activity but it's nowhere near as active as the as the mashed potatoes is so we're gonna do here now we're gonna switch over to day two and again uh, you can see a lot more activity uh, nothing's going up the sides yet but and a lot of movement and then we're gonna switch over to the oats and there you go the oats are picking up speed but the funny thing is, as you can see, they're starting to climb the sides already, which is what I would expect. But, <laughs> I won't spoil it. We'll just, <laughs> you'll see coming up here. Now, what I do for my cultures uh, in between the days, like I didn't show you the, the last one. What I do is I tend to re-inoculate with yeast um, for the first few days. So between day one and day two, uh, I just use a bit of tank water and active yeast. I just mix it all up. And once I have it suspended, 
I put a little bit into each of them. And I'm putting the exact same amount in all of them. It's hard to tell with fast forward, of course. And then I do is I slosh that around. It's kind of like a, just a kind of a quick yeah, head start for these things to get them producing as quickly as possible. But I'm treating them all the same, so. So here we are, we're on day three now. Uh, you can see it's starting to come up the sides. Getting actually a pretty good production of worms in both of the uh, potato cultures. But let's see, we're going to switch over now to the oat cultures. <laughs> Just a little bit more production. I think it might have something to do with the uh, rougher surface, so you get a little bit more surface area. But boy, does it produce a lot more worms. Uh, normally at this point I would start actually culturing. Uh, I mean, sorry, not culturing. Uh, I would actually start using them. Here we are at day four. I mean, this is actually getting to be a point where I can actually start harvesting this one as well. Uh, and yeah, I need to start using these because uh, <laughs> if you leave them go too long, they get kind of crusty and they die at the top. And I uh, then they're just useless, so I want to need to use them. And here's day four with the... With the <laughs> The funny thing is, actually, at this point, they're crawling on the lid on the top, <laughs> so they need to be start uh, to be used. So on day five in the morning, what I did is I set up a little visual uh, representation here for the difference in the amount of worms that are being produced. These are two uh, two-liter pop bottles that I've just uh, taken the label off and also cut the top off. And what I do is just wet my finger and rubbing on the inside and pulling out all the worms that I can get off for all four cultures. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the potato ones in this one here, and then I'm going to put all of the oat ones in the other one. And then, and then I'm going to suspend them by uh, using uh, the baster and get it all stirred up, and you can see the difference. The only reason why I'm using two liters is I, I, I don't use two liters when I'm harvesting for uh, putting into the fish tanks. Uh, what I just want you to show, I want to dilute it out enough so that you can actually see how big a difference there is in the production here. Uh, I actually like a lot of worms, like I feed not just babies, I also feed juveniles and uh, if they're guppies and uh, platies and uh, smaller fish, I uh, feed to adults too. So I find they may not get a lot of actual, I don't know, <laughs> calories out of it or whatever you want to call it but they really do like chasing after them and eating them it really perks them up so i try to feed them uh, to as many things as possible so here we are we're going to do the uh the oat one now and just wash my finger when i pull it off <laughs> you can just see how much is on there it's just a crazy amount so uh as this progress further here what i want there's like i said in the beginning there are some other things that are more important to me than just producing a lot of worms because for most people, the potato one, that's more than enough. I just happen to have a, a, a few more tanks and a lot more things I want to feed. Uh, so that's not really the most important thing. Uh, the most important thing for me is uh, I don't want to have to have too many of these cultures laying around. So if I uh, harvest in the morning, uh, in the evening when I give the second feeding, uh, I want to actually have a culture that can do both. So I don't have to have... You know, four cultures I can just do with two. So, yeah, it just reduces the number that I have to have kicking around. And also, just in case, you know, a culture goes sour or I forget to reculture or whatever, uh, I get enough of a backup without uh, having to worry about having, uh, you know, again, too many of these laying around. So, here we go. I got them all harvested now. What I'm going to do is stir them up. And uh, you can, well, I haven't even stirred them up yet, and you can already see the difference. But, uh, once we get this uh, suspended, <laughs> you're going to see quite a difference in the amount of worms. So here you go. Uh, gonna, this is the uh, potato one. You, I'm giving it a good stir. You can actually see the individual worms swimming around there and wiggling. But when you stir this one up, it's pretty much dilute milk. You can see a little bit of it, but nowhere near the same as you can the other one. The amount of production difference is astounding. So you go top down view, you can't see the bottom here at all. And then the other one, you can. So like I said, the other thing, the important thing was, uh, can I reculture or reuse in the afternoon? So the afternoon came back and this is what it looks like six hours later. Uh, again, I could reculture, I could reharvest this one and same with the other ones, uh, but you get a bit more. <laughs> um, yeah. More than just a bit more. <laughs> you get a bit more with the oats. 
So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. If there is another difference, like uh, smell or how long this lasts or whatever, or another benefit of one over the other, I will let you know as time progresses. Uh, but for the moment, that's uh, the end of this little study. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of thing, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.